Good morning, everyone. Jeremy Young, um, Lancaster City Alliance. My title at Lancaster City Alliance is Community and Economic Development Manager. I'll tell you a little bit about my organization in just a moment. Um, but my, uh, my background and my training um, is in urban planning. Uh, any, does anybody know what urban planning is? Is that a familiar term to anyone? Any guesses out there? No one? In a nutshell, city planners or urban planners work with government officials, business leaders, and citizens to create better places, better urban areas for people in which to live, work, learn, and play. Um, and uh, before I could become a city planner, I, I had to take a, a certain path to get to that point. Um, and so I thought I'd take you along that path to show you the experience that I gained uh, and the, the different academic curriculum uh, curricula that I, uh, that I studied uh, to get where I am today. Um, for, first off, before I start, um, how many of you are from Lancaster, Lancaster City? Okay. How many of you are from Lancaster County? Okay. How many of you are from outside of Pennsylvania? Finally, let me ask you this question. How many of you have visited Lancaster, Lancaster City? Okay, so a good number of you in the room. That, that's good background. So before I uh, ended up where I am today at, at Lancaster City Alliance, and again, I'll, I'll uh, provide some background on the organization that I work for in just a moment. I just wanted to give you, uh, again, an understanding of how I got to where I am today as an urban planner, a city planner, which uh, provided me with the skills and, and expertise necessary for my current role at Lancaster City Alliance. Uh, I grew up in Lancaster, and in fact in Lancaster City, um, and graduated from J.P. McCaskey High School. Anyone familiar with J.P. McCaskey? Did you go to McCaskey? Lancaster Catholic. Okay, or our tribal. Uh, <laughs> after graduating from high school, uh, like many, many young uh, graduates, high school graduates, I didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to do as an adult. And so I decided, uh, unlike my friends who went right off to college, I decided to take a few years off and, and try to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, and so I worked for a number of years uh, in local restaurants in Lancaster City, uh, which at the time, Lancaster City was, well, wasn't really much. Uh, in fact, uh, many remember it as a ghost town, uh, downtown Lancaster. Uh, but at, at the time that I graduated high school and entered the restaurant scene, there were some new restaurants that had opened up, and it felt like there was this new wave of revitalization that was getting underway. And uh, I noticed uh, going to work every day to the restaurants, uh, I, I, I could feel this energy uh, and this reawakening of, of the city. And so I thought, you know, this is really, really intriguing, really exciting. How can I, how can I become a part of this? Um, noticing all the development and all the new investment around me. So I went and talked to a, uh, an advisor at Millersville University of Pennsylvania, uh, which is not far from here, not far from Lancaster. Uh, and uh, I told him about this, this exciting uh, environment uh, that I'd been exposed to in downtown and all the, the activity that had, had inspired me. And I said, you know, is there something, is there a career field that I could go into that could uh, get me into this kind of work. And he said, well, it sounds like you'd like to be a city planner. And before that, I had never heard that term, city planner, never knew that field existed. Um, and he said, but we don't have a city planning program here at Millersville, but if you'd like to stay at Millersville, I'd recommend um, studying geography. Uh, and that could provide you with a great foundation to pursue a master's eventually in planning. And so that's exactly what I did. I started at Millersville in 2008 after taking about five or six years off after high school. Um, was a non-traditional student uh, at the time. Um, and uh, studied geography with a concentration in geospatial applications, which is a fancy word for GIS. Is anybody familiar with GIS? It's a computer mapping and data analysis tool that's really growing today. <coughs> word of advice. Uh, so, so just. Uh, just to understand, how, how many of you are, are juniors here at E-Town? How many of you are seniors? Okay, so most of you are underclassmen. Okay, that's, that's great. So take, take this away uh, today, uh, if nothing else. 
as, as underclassmen, or well, really as students at E-Town, try to take advantage of every opportunity before you to gain additional experience beyond what you're learning in the classroom. Um, that's something I'm very proud of, of myself for doing uh, while at Millersville and, and beyond in my graduate program. Um, and so what I did was uh, knowing where I wanted to go, where I wanted to be as an urban planner eventually, I tried to find internships that uh, were relevant to that line of work. And so not only did I try to find an internship, I tried to find as many internships as I could cram in to my four-year academic career at Millersville. And so I started in 2009 at the Lancaster County Planning Commission, uh, which really works towards smart growth uh, and, and developing our communities in Lancaster County in such a way that we're able, able to fill in uh, vacant land in our urban areas, our city and our boroughs like Elizabethtown. Uh, and uh, of course, there's, there's a major goal of preserving uh, our unique farmland, uh, which is really connected to our, our heritage uh, and our legacy. How do we preserve that? And so I worked for a summer there. I uh, got some experience uh, tracking new, new residential and commercial growth. Uh, that set me up for another internship, which was really related to what I was passionate about, which got me interested in city planning to begin with, and that was in the city of Lancaster uh, and had an opportunity to work with a new organization, newer organization about uh, six, seven years old at the time called James Street Improvement District. Um, that organization was started by two nonprofit entities, uh, nonprofit powerhouses in the city of Lancaster, Franklin and Marshall College, focused uh, or based in the northwest part of the city of Lancaster, and Lancaster General Hospital, uh, focused uh, or based in the north central part of the city. They wanted to strengthen the neighborhoods uh, surrounding their institutions and between their institutions and grow commerce um, and really improve quality of life there uh, as a way to attract new patients, new students, new professors uh, to their institutions. And so uh, they were successful. And uh, after about five years as a new organization, uh, then Mayor Rick Gray at the time asked the organization to take over the administration of the Downtown Investment District in Lancaster City. Uh, which really covers the core of uh, the heart of downtown or the, uh, the center part of Lancaster City. Uh, and so uh, when I started interning, I had the opportunity to work uh, both in the northwestern and north central parts of the city as an intern, but also downtown. Um, from there, that set me up to uh, apply for a special internship program at Millersville University through the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education called the THIS program. Uh, that was the Harrisburg Internship Semester Program, which selects uh, one student from each of the state system's 14 universities to represent their university at the state capitol complex uh, in an office of uh, or a government agency. Uh, and so I had an opportunity to work uh, for the State Historic Preservation Office, which helps communities to uh, preserve historic buildings and uh, their historic built environment. Uh, which is very, very important for economic development. When you look at Lancaster's success, uh, Lancaster is a very historic city, uh, and its historic character actually has largely attracted a lot of the investment that we see today. Um, so you can see in, in, in a, a short period of time, uh, you know, in, in a three-year period, I was able to do three separate internships which provided me with all sorts of uh, varying experiences which uh, really laid a, a critical foundation for me as I applied for graduate schools and really set me apart, I think, from many of my peers as I applied to graduate schools. Um, after I finished with my uh, internship at the state, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, um, I applied to graduate schools. I applied to five. Uh, I was for very, very fortunate to be accepted at all five. Um, and then uh, it, it became a decision of where, where do I want to go and is anyone offering me anything that will uh, incentivize uh, me going to their school. So um, a word of advice to those of you, uh, show of hands, who's planning to go to graduate school right away? Okay. So if, if you're planning to apply to graduate schools, um, we all know uh, graduate school, college in general is, is, not, is not inexpensive, right? Um, Take advantage of opportunities to uh, not only learn, but have your tuition waived. Uh, and so that's what I did uh, when I wrote my letters of interest to these graduate programs. I indicated that I was interested in doing research or teaching uh, as a way to uh, earn a stipend, but also 
uh, receive a t tuition waiver. And it came down to two schools of the five that I, I was interested in going to that offered me a graduate research as assistantship. Um, the University of Illinois in Chicago and Portland State University in, in Portland, Oregon. And then it, uh, from there it was down to, okay, which, which school is offering me the better deal? Uh, and ultimately it was Portland, Oregon. And so I ended up at Portland State University uh, located in downtown Portland, Oregon, uh, which really was at the top of my list of those five schools anyway. So I really lucked out. Uh, Portland, Oregon is really known as a mecca for urban planning uh, and really uh, truly one of the most progressive and innovative cities uh, with regard to planning cities uh, from everything uh, from transportation to real estate development to uh, infill development in our, in our um, underutilized uh, properties downtown. Uh, clearly a leader. And so, um, once again, I tried to maximize my experience in graduate school, uh, not only through doing that uh, research assistantship, but also, uh, in addition to pursuing my master's, uh, I also pursued um, a graduate certificate in real estate development. So, Master of Urban and Regional Planning uh, with a focus <coughs> in economic development, uh, which is really, uh, was really helpful in helping me to land the job that I have today. Uh, as well as the real estate development certificate. Um, again, broadening my experience and my expertise as much as possible. Um, and so uh, I mentioned a graduate research as assistantship. I had the opportunity uh, and the pleasure to do research for the Institute of Portland Metropolitan Studies, which looks at not only the city of Portland, but the broader uh, metropolitan area and uh, does research to study critical uh, social, environmental, and economic issues impacting the Portland region. Has anybody been to Portland? I'm from Portland. Okay, fantastic. Um, also uh, wanted to take advantage of op uh, internship opportunities in graduate school in addition to my research assistantship. I like <coughs> to stay busy, can anyone tell? <laughs> Um, and so I worked for the Port of Portland, which is one of the Pacific Northwest's um, largest economic engines. Uh, the Port of Portland controls not only uh, shipping and cargo uh, coming down the Columbia River from the Pacific Ocean uh, and vice versa, but also uh, all air traffic control. Uh, the, the Portland Airport is uh, a function of the port as well. Uh, so I was able to gain some additional uh, economic development and real estate development experience there as an intern. Uh, while also helping to pay my, my housing bill uh, in Portland. And, and as a part of my graduate program uh, all in, in planning, uh, all students are required to do a, a six-month capstone or workshop project. And what's really cool about Portland State University, and re really what attracted me to that university and that grad program was the opportunity to do a workshop project, a real-life planning project that will impact uh, communities in the Portland region. And so I had the opportunity to work with five other students uh, to uh, and, and work in collaboration with um, the Bureau of Portland uh, Development and, and Planning uh, to develop an activation strategy to make the downtown waterfront a more vibrant place. Uh, so this is the cover page from our plan. Uh, we actually uh, formed, my, my peers and I uh, that worked on this project, formed a uh, private consultant group uh, as part of this project. From there, uh, my, first, my first son was on the way, and my wife and I wanted to be close to family, so we hopped back over to the East Coast, back to Pennsylvania. Didn't end up back in Lancaster, but ended up in Harrisburg, and got some additional uh, experience, um, this time uh, in historic preservation, uh, disaster planning, and climate change planning, uh, where all those fields intersected. Um, the federal government provided states after Hurricane Sandy with funds to help their historic communities, uh, help, help states' historic communities plan for future disasters uh, to protect their historic buildings and built environment from disasters. And this is an example of a project that we did in Philadelphia where we identified all of that city's uh, flood-prone historic buildings, uh, some of which date back to the 1600s. Um, and you can see here uh, this particular building uh, could take on a significant amount of water uh, with six feet of sea level rise. Many people don't think about Philadelphia as a sea level rise prone city, but indeed it is. Um, so in summary, uh, that was my last gig before I ended up in my current role at Lancaster City Alliance. As you can see, I, I was very fortunate um, 
in, in gaining a variety of, of experiences and knowledge uh, that, that set me up for my current role. Uh, and that was all uh, thanks to some really deliberate planning on my part, which I, I recommend you all, again, think about as you move toward your career and, and getting those experiences that will really propel you and, and help you to stand out. So back to Lancaster City Alliance uh, and what our organization is and what I do there uh, with that organization. I thought I'd start with a little background and history. So I mentioned the James Street Improvement District um, in the northwest, north central part of town. Uh, that, that organization merged with another organization called Lancaster Alliance and I'll tell you about that in a second. But just a little background for those of you who aren't super familiar with Lancaster. Uh, by the way, I recommend uh, you can take the train to Lancaster from, from the Elizabethtown train station, if you haven't already. Uh, it sure beats uh, 283. Um, but as you can see, Lancaster is uh, very well situated between many major US cities, <coughs> Washington, DC, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, and Pittsburgh, um, which has really boded well for it. Um, and uh, many people see it as a, a, a better alternative to the larger city uh, to live, uh, but can continue working in some of those larger cities. Uh, uh, Philadelphia is a great example of where, where many people live in Lancaster and, and take the train. Uh, but they can, those folks can really enjoy a higher quality of life at a lower cost of living. Uh, so that's really made Lancaster stand out. Uh, Lancaster City is about seven square miles. Uh, the historic heart of the city, the original boundary is four square miles. As you can see it laid out there, it dates to 1730. Uh, it's one of America's oldest inland cities. Population of about 60,000 and growing. We have about 40,000 employees in the city of Lancaster um, on a daily basis. 8,000 college students. So not only do we have Franklin and Marshall College within our city limits, but we also have the Ware Center for Millersville University of Pennsylvania uh, and the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. <coughs> we attract a million visitors per year and growing. Uh, so with that background on Lancaster, um, five years ago, Lancaster City Alliance is now five years old. Uh, James Street Improvement District, the organization that I talked about, which uh, focused on northwest and north central Lancaster City, and then eventually downtown Lancaster, merged with a, an organization called Lancaster Alliance, which was a, another nonprofit sort of economic development think tank, uh, strategic uh, planning, uh, big thinker type of organization. Uh, that organization had been around for 20 years prior to the merger with James Street Improvement District. Uh, which had, uh, had been 10 years old prior to that. So combined about 30 years of experience in economic development in Lancaster City to create the Lancaster City Alliance. The vision of our organization, really we want to see a strong community, a strong economy, and a vibrant city. Uh, very simple. Um, and our mission is unleashing Lancaster's potential, or Lancaster's future, through daring conversations, unique partnerships and measurable outcomes and by delivering on our, our organization's stated aspirations. We aim to influence, lead, and implement strategies in building a world-class city, a city that embraces fresh ideas, success for all, and inclusionary practices. We take on our role as private sector contributors with pride and respect and look to be a valued community asset, an integral partner, in achieving an extraordinary quality of life. That in a nutshell is, is who we are and what we represent. Our aspirations, I mentioned our aspirations. What are those? We have four of, four of those. Uh, the first is curating and engaging the community, uh, maintaining and growing the respect and participation within our community as a trusted advisor and an organization that really get th gets things done. Uh, and that uh, is really done through collaboration and partnership, which you'll see in a moment. Um, and so solidifying our role as a prominent communicator of city news and events. And I invite all of you um, to take out your smartphones after I'm done presenting. Please wait until I'm done. Uh, to uh, those of you who are on Facebook, please like our Facebook page. And you'll see what I mean by communicator of city news and events. Um, we don't just promote ourselves. We promote the community and all the, the amazing things that happen in Lancaster. Another of our aspirations, which you'll learn a lot more about <coughs> shortly, is uh, building on the economic momentum of the city through the execution of Building on Strength. And that's the name of the city's 15-year economic development strategic plan, uh, which looks to the year 2030. 
Strengthening neighborhoods has always been a critical focus of our organization, uh, which dates back to our, our days as the James Street Improvement District. And when we merged with the Lancaster, when, when I say we, uh, Lan James Street Improvement District merged with Lancaster Alliance uh, five years ago, uh, that enabled uh, James Street Improvement District to focus not only on the northwest part of the city, but all four quadrants of the city. And so we, we really are a citywide organization. Um, and uh, we continue to manage the downtown investment district. Uh, we're involved in um, some key neighborhood revitalization initiatives uh, in the city currently, uh, two of which are south of King Street. Uh, and south of King Street uh, is, a, is a, a half of the city that has seen a lot of disinvestment uh, over many, many decades, uh, and today sees the highest poverty rate, uh, in fact, one of the highest poverty rates in the state, 40% um, uh, or more of the population south of King Street, uh, the southern half of the city, uh, live in poverty today. Um, and so um, we're working uh, as a lead partner and as advising staff to uh, the So We initiative, uh, another Facebook page for you to like, uh, jot that down. Uh, so We Southwest Lancaster, um, which is really on the move today. And really, uh, growing and sustaining our organization. How do, we, how do we grow our organization to keep up with the, the momentum and the demand uh, for economic development in the city? We do an awful lot as a small team. This is it, this is our team. Uh, seven, now, no, now eight. We just added uh, a social media manager. Uh, and, uh, but it's not just our team that gets things done. Uh, our organization really embodies the idea of private-public partnership. <coughs> and so uh, where we really stand out uh, compared to many of our peer organizations nationwide is we harness the power of the private sector uh, to get things done, not only as a key funding source, uh, but as uh, powerful uh, members uh, of uh, the community dialogue. You can see here a lot of the, the power players uh, on our board of directors. Uh, representatives from each of these organizations serve on our board. Uh, there, many of these are our largest contributors, our funders. Uh, but we don't only rely on, on big, big companies or institutions like these to uh, fund our $1 million budget uh, annually. Uh, we also rely on uh, donations from small businesses and families in the city. When our, our two organizations merged five years ago, um, that would have resulted in a board of directors of about 30 or 40. Uh, and so not really ideal, not really feasible <coughs> to operate with a board that large. And so we shrunk it down to a board of this size uh, and thought, why not create some committees or a committee structure, which we've, we've called executive leadership teams, which allowed some of those uh, uh, high-performing board members to step into a new role. Uh, and so we've got a handful of these economic, or excuse me, of these executive leadership teams, uh, economic development and planning. And many, many of these uh, companies or institutions you may recognize um, as, as big players here in the county. Uh, this is one of our largest ELTs with uh, the most members, uh, but this, this group really served as a sounding board for the development of the Economic Development Plan Building on Strength, which I'll talk about in just a moment. And they also continue to monitor progress on that plan. Community Safety Executive Leadership Team. Neighborhoods. Advocacy. Marketing. Chairpersons Council and Finance and Development private sector players that are really stepping forward and again, not only providing funding, but providing a voice in that community dialogue, which is really critical today. Lancaster City Alliance's primary areas of focus, uh, economic development, as you may have guessed, community development or neighborhoods, uh, which you may have also guessed by now. Quality of life is really big for our organization. I'll talk about that in a moment. Marketing the city and public safety. You saw the list of all of our executive leadership team members and our board, uh, board of directors representatives. Uh, they're not the only ones um, helping to get things done in the city. Uh, you can see this complicated, tangled ecosystem or web 
of all of our um, partners uh, that help us to work toward those areas of quality of life, public safety, marketing the city, and community and economic development. Uh, not only uh, private companies and institutions like Franklin and Marshall College and, and Lancaster General, uh, but also other nonprofits that have uh, an influence on socioeconomic growth. What is economic development? Um, so, uh, <coughs> Professor Dimitri is a professor of economics. Um, he might tell you that uh, this is a textbook definition of economic development. Efforts that seek to improve the economic well-being and quality of life for a community by creating and or retaining jobs and supporting or growing incomes and the tax, tax base. That's a mouthful, right? Complicated definition. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully help you to see economic development or maybe our version, Lancaster City Alliance's version of economic development uh, in, a, in a quite different way. So we see economic development in Lancaster and as, a, as the Lancaster City Alliance as creating new shopping opportunities both downtown and along the city's major streets. Encouraging the development of new housing in the city, apartments and single family homes, condominiums, so that there are enough places to live. Um, many of you may or may not be aware that the city of Lancaster, and in fact Lancaster County in general, is uh, on the verge uh, or in the midst of a, uh, an affordability, uh, housing affordability crisis. Uh, the uh, supply simply hasn't kept up with the demand for the economic students out there. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's even more challenging to develop new housing in a landlocked city like the city of Lancaster. So here's, uh, when we talk about urban revitalization, this is the poster child here uh, for a project that uh, will really help the city to make major <coughs> leaps and bounds uh, moving forward. This is a building that was constructed uh, during the urban renewal period, late 60s, early 70s, as a department store as part of uh, the urban renewal era which saw the wholesale demolition of blocks and blocks of downtown Lancaster uh, which once uh, represented vibrant shops and uh, office space, hotel space. Um, and this, this department store was, was only open for two years until it closed. Uh, just gives you an indicator of what, what sort of success that project saw. Uh, it saw some limited use uh, after that and then it, it basically stood like this vacant for over 10 years um, and was just a blight on the, on the streetscape. Um, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, those of you who are familiar with architecture uh, from that time period, um, there, there are these brutalist uh, block type structures uh, that often didn't have windows. And you can see this building uh, looks exactly as, as it did when it was constructed with no windows. Pleased to say, uh, those of you who have been in downtown Lancaster uh, in the last several months, uh, you've seen the progress. Uh, but this is what this building will look like very soon. Uh, and we, we hope to see this building go online this fall. A dramatic difference, as you can see. This underutilized building, over 200,000 square feet uh, vacant, uh, will now see uh, 40,000 square feet of new retail and restaurant space on the first floor. 80,000 square feet of new office space and uh, residential units, condominiums and apartments on the upper floor. Uh, but you can see the windows, <laughs> uh, which light pouring out of those windows will just add so much to the street uh, and the street life. Here's another angle. We're also seeing new townhouses being constructed in the city uh, and in particular in some areas of the city where they're, they're drastically needed. Uh, this is uh, along the South Duke Street corridor, uh, which is a, an area of focus uh, of the Building on Strength plan. Adjacent to that, we've seen new commercial development. Uh, and so really, we really want to see growth outside of downtown uh, into the neighborhood spines, if you will, those uh, commercial hubs or corridors <laughs> that provide neighborhood serving businesses. And that's what we're seeing here. Economic development to Lancaster City Alliance is also making Lancaster City cleaner, safer, and greener. Uh, and really at the end of the day, economic development for us is about making Lancaster City a more attractive place to live, work, learn, and do business. And play. Don't forget play. Uh, so how do we make Lancaster City more, more attractive, uh, cleaner, safer, greener? We have bicycle ambassadors. Um, these date back to the James Street improvement days. Uh, James Street Improvement District days of the organization uh, since 2003. 
The red shirt uh, bicycle ambassadors uh, serve as extra eyes and ears for uh, police and code enforcement. Um, and they currently cover about a third of the city's historic four square miles. And we're hoping to grow that. We have a clean team focused on downtown, uh, keeping the sidewalks clean and tidy uh, to attract shoppers and visitors. You can see here some of the stats uh, that, that we see in, in a given month, uh, 11 tons of trash and leaves collected from sidewalks in a single month. Um, but we don't only rely on uh, paid services like the ambassadors and the clean team. Uh, we have uh, programs that we're able to engage residents and small businesses in helping to take matters into their own hands to improve um, their environment. And so we have a trash receptacle adoption program. Uh, to date, we've installed uh, about 75 of those in the northwest and northeast parts of the city. Uh, and we're installing about 20 more uh, south of King Street this spring. Uh, basically, residents and small businesses agree to empty those uh, regularly. Uh, and it really helps to keep the litter off the streets. We also help to promote the City of Lancaster, City of Lancaster government's Adopt the Block program, sort of like Adopt a Highway, but for, uh, at a smaller scale uh, in the city. Uh, that's actually my, my wife and my two boys with me on uh, our street in Lancaster City. Uh, and uh, to date, uh, since last January, we've helped about 110 volunteers sign up for this program uh, with over 20 miles of adopted streets so far. Lancaster City Alliance is a key partner on the Lancaster Tree Tenders, uh, which is an initiative of Lancaster City Alliance, the City of Lancaster, and the Lancaster County Conservancy. Uh, really all about increasing tree canopy in the city. Uh, we, we'd like to see 40% of our um, four square miles covered in canopy um, in, the, in the next few years. Uh, and we're doing that by planting, uh, we've planted over 700 new street trees since the spring of 2017. Uh, about a thousand yard trees and trees along streams and the Conestoga River. And we've also identified over 1,500 new planting sites along our city streets for new, new, uh, new trees. And why are trees important? Um, trees uh, help to increase property values. Uh, they clean the air, they clean the storm water, uh, they provide shade to promote walkability. Uh, and really, they, they beautify the environment. Here's a, a, a block in uh, South Lancaster City. This is the 300 block of South Prince Street. And as you can see it today, um, really no trees, right? Um, and really, this is an equity issue for us in Lancaster City. Uh, when you look at a map uh, showing the number of trees, street trees per block, uh, it, there's a, a drastic, uh, drastic difference between North Lancaster and South Lancaster in terms of the number of trees. So this block in South Lancaster has, uh, <coughs> I think the trees that are on, on this block are behind the camera. Uh, there are about seven trees, I think, on this block. Uh, but if you go to a more affluent neighborhood, uh, the 500 block of West Chestnut Street, for example, uh, blocks like those have you know, north of 25 trees per block. Uh, so we're trying to change that. Um, and so trying to envision you know, the, the opportunity, here, here we are today, here's what we could look like in a few years, and maybe in 15 or 20 years uh, if we planted some trees on that block. Quite a drastic difference, as you can see. So again, helping to create a more attractive environment to attract new residents, new businesses, and, and visitors. Uh, economic development for Lancaster City Alliance is also marketing Lancaster City as a, as a great place to live and visit. Uh, recruiting new businesses to the city, but also keeping our existing ones, uh, not displacing them, uh, and ultimately ensuring that there are enough well-paying jobs to sustain our families. That goes back to that textbook definition of economic development, which ultimately is about um, raising incomes for, for residents. <coughs> so downtown Lancaster, um, moving into our Building on Strength plan, uh, just some stats. Uh, we've got three, over 300 merchants, services, restaurants, and cultural attractions just in downtown Lancaster alone, uh, several square blocks radius. 160 places to shop or more. 100 plus culinary choices. We've seen the number of restaurants and cafes double 
uh, in the last 10 years, and we've really become a culinary attraction uh, nationally, uh, and, and you see that in the national press. <coughs> 90 plus art venues in downtown Lancaster, we've really become a destination to the, uh, uh, for the arts, uh, both uh, for galleries, but also performing arts. Uh, the Fulton Theater is an example, the Ware Center. Um, and uh, really, the, uh, the arts community has, in addition to, I mentioned our historic character, uh, which provided a foundation for our economic development success, the arts community has really propelled us forward and attracted uh, additional investment. But how did we get there? Um, I would say that's pretty successful. Would you, would you agree for a small town of 60,000 and four square miles? Uh, again, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, uh, many would have called downtown Lancaster a ghost town about 15 or 20 years ago. Um, quite, quite different than what we see today. How did we get there? We had uh, a plan that uh, our, our predecessor organization, the Lancaster Alliance, helped to develop uh, through uh, private sector collaboration, uh, which called for many of the big ticket items that we see today in the city of Lancaster. Has anyone been to the Lancaster County Convention Center? or the Lancaster Barnstormer Stadium. Okay, these, these are two, um, two projects that cost hundreds of millions of dollars that have attracted millions of people to the city, uh, which have encouraged uh, small businesses and developers to invest uh, in the city beyond those projects. Um, and so this plan created in 1998 um, is largely implemented today. And um, in 2014, then Mayor Rick Gray um, called on, on our organization, our new organization, to create the next economic development plan, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but this, this action, um, creating the convention center, the <coughs> baseball stadium, uh, and all of the other investment that followed, uh, resulted in uh, businesses relocate, relocating and expanding in the greater downtown area to bring uh, over 1,000 new workers, and I think with Projects uh, currently on the table under development, we're, we're going to expect about 1,100 additional workers downtown uh, by 2020. That's resulted in 150 or more net new businesses, uh, and about 70 of those expanded or relocated uh, within the city uh, since 2007. 300 or more new housing units completed in the last five years, and 400 new housing units planned over the next two years. Again, which is really remarkable for uh, where we were and where we are now um, and, and the fact that we're a landlocked city. So between 2007 and 2015, uh, which is when the new economic development was, plan was developed, uh, we saw over a billion and a half dollars of investment in the city of Lancaster. And you can see a lot of that reflected on this map. So building on strength, I'm going to fly through this so we have enough time for question uh, and answer and discussion. Uh, but as I mentioned, the previous mayor, uh, Rick Gray, called on our new organization to develop the next plan for the city of Lancaster. We saw a lot of growth in downtown in the, in the 10 years or so prior to that. Uh, and so the idea was, how do we continue that growth and, and investment downtown, uh, continue that economic momentum, but also uh, help to see it spread into the neighborhoods. Uh, and so um, the, the new plan doesn't neglect uh, downtown as a focus. Um, as many might say, many of these other areas were neglected uh, over many, many, many decades. Um, this plan focuses on downtown and those commercial hubs, as we call them, uh, east, and, east and West King Street, Manor <coughs> Street, South Prince and Queen Street, South Duke Street, et cetera. These are really the gateways into downtown from outside the city. Uh, so it's the first thing that people see uh, when they enter the city, uh, as well as when they leave. Um, and so this is where we'd like to see new investment uh, move uh, over, over the next 15 years, or by 2030. And uh, this was a pretty monumental planning effort. Uh, it cost about $200,000 to develop this plan. And uh, you know, it, like our organization, really embodied private-public partnerships. So, the city of Lancaster, City Hall, really our key partner on this, and you know, they charged us with developing this plan, raising the funds to, to, to develop this plan. But you can see who else was engaged in providing the funding for this plan, and who really have a stake, uh, even today, in this plan's success. 
Many of these, uh, as you recognize, uh, are also reflected on our board of directors. So you can't have a successful plan without listening, sharing, confirming uh, with the public, with the residents, with the small businesses. Um, this, ultimately, this is their plan, the community's plan, and it won't be successful unless uh, they have input. And so we really did that. Uh, and you can see all of the, the groups that we included in the development of the plan. About a year, a year and a half planning process. Over 100 meetings and forums from large to small. We had one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus groups, public surveys, round tables, and tons and tons of public meetings um, over that year and a half. Uh, we developed a plan based on that input um, that really wants to see these key aspirations come to fruition. We want to attract and retain talent, create jobs that provide a livable wage. It's really, really key, especially in a city where we have such a high poverty rate. We want to provide equitable opportunities uh, and encourage targeted economic development, again, in those key, key arteries in the city. At the end of the day, we really want to create an environment <coughs> where those small businesses can thrive and grow. Uh, citywide, not just downtown. And we'd love to be a national model. Uh, we'd love for people uh, in other cities uh, to point to Lancaster and say, wow, they did it. So uh, I'll run through this quickly so we have enough time for questions. Uh, the Building on Strength Plan, so that name uh, really uh, reflects that idea that we've seen the strength over the last 10 years, 10, 15 years. How do we continue that? How do we build on that strength moving forward? and looking out into the future. Uh, so again, it looks to 2030. The plan's uh, broken down into four broad strategies, which uh, uh, are broken down, br broken down further into 33 specific recommendations. Uh, and they, they range from short term to long term. Some recommendations will take a lot longer to uh, come to fruition than others. So I'll run through these. Strategy one is really focused on what we think of as traditional economic development, or some might say real estate development, um, really creating that environment uh, to attract the investment by uh, providing the infrastructure, um, but also making sure we have the funding to do that. Uh, we, we call quarterly meetings with um, local banks and financing institutions to help us come up with creative uh, funding solutions to implement the plan. Again, building, building that infrastructure, um, whether it's through identifying grants to help us fund the plan, um, developing the streetscape to attract investment, or provide high-speed internet to businesses to attract, attract them to the city. Here's an example of uh, a block just on the cusp of downtown. Uh, this is the 200 block of West King Street, um, one of the more blighted areas close to downtown, uh, which was once a very vibrant commercial corridor. Um, it saw about 80 years worth of disinvestment. Um, you can see the building on the left, uh, which was formerly a county building with uh, district justice offices, uh, boarded up like this for several years. Um, and today, we now have a neighborhood serving supermarket. Uh, it's the little projects like this that make all the difference, especially for the neighborhoods. Uh, that surround these corridors. Facade improvements, so uh, helping uh, property owners to improve the uh, conditions of their, uh, the exterior of their, of their homes and businesses. Uh, we just created a new facade improvement program, uh, which is a great example of partnerships and collaboration, uh, which again is something we always strive <coughs> for and really embodies who we are. Uh, we were fortunate to receive about $400,000 uh, in the last year from a variety of philanthropic foundations. Uh, Wells Fargo Regional Foundation, the Steinman Foundation, the High Foundation. Uh, you may recognize some of these players. That's enabled us to partner with another nonprofit organization uh, called Community Action Partnership, who has a nonprofit uh, general contractor entity, uh, construction entity, um, under their umbrella. Uh, and they uh, are a workforce development um, uh, generator. So they bring on folks with barriers to employment um, and move them into a pre-apprenticeship pre role to help them get the hard and soft skills they'll need to move into local construction industry jobs, of which we have thousands uh, empty currently. Um, so understanding that if we can find uh, jobs for those folks who have barriers to employment in the local constru construction industry, that will help th that industry to fill those jobs 
which will help them to bring down the cost of building, which will help us to build new housing and commercial. Um, it's a big cycle. Um, but we've partnered with, with them, uh, Community Action Partnership or Capital Construction, their, their construction entity, to um, do these facade improvements. So they'll be the single contractor. Uh, you can see this property on the 400 block of South Queen, uh, which hasn't seen much investment uh, in decades. Um, we're going to try to re restore some of the historic character uh, to many of the buildings on uh, South Prince and South Queen and Manor Streets, uh, some of those key corridors in the building on strength plan, uh, and try to use some salvaged material where we can uh, to try to recreate their original character, which we hope will attract investment. Uh, you can see that the building on the left is a condemned uh, property that saw a fire within the last year. It's just really been a blight on the neighborhood. So how do we turn that around uh, and help improve quality of life for the people that live in that neighborhood? Our, our idea is we'll, we'll um, restore its character to something like, like the home on the right. Strategy two of the, of the plan is really focused on entrepreneurship and uh, growing small businesses. And so uh, one of the ways we do that is through uh, our Cultivate Lancaster Entrepreneurs Forum, uh, where we bring, uh, I think we had our largest event yet a few weeks ago, uh, where we had about 200 attendees, almost 300 actually, uh, where we bring in uh, folks who are interested in starting a small business or budding entrepreneurs. Uh, bring them in a room uh, with service providers like Assets, which is a local economic <coughs> development or entrepreneurship partner of ours, uh, SCORE, Lancaster, Lebanon, and they provide mentorships uh, and counseling to these uh, budding entrepreneurs to get them uh, off to the next step uh, to where they can open their business. It's also about developing um, entrepreneurship hubs uh, like co-working spaces. This is Pub Forge. Uh, we also have another uh, downtown called uh, the Candy Factory, which uh, I invite you to, to check out and explore. Strategy three is really about marketing the city, uh, again, to attract that investment, whether it's visitors or developers uh, or businesses. Um, we want to attract them to the city. Um, here are some of our power players that are helping us to market the city currently uh, for a variety of reasons and variety of audiences. Uh, their, their efforts as well as, uh, honestly, the, the efforts of our, our local business community have resulted in some really cool headlines in the last, uh, last few years. Uh, you can see those here, New York Post, Daily News, and the New York Times. Uh, really, really, really becoming a destination uh, in Lancaster City. Strategy four is based on quality of life uh, and how do, we, uh, how do we facilitate more efficient transportation to get people around the city, but also to jobs in the county? Uh, how do we uh, create bike infrastructure, make our city more walkable? Uh, but how, you know, how do we provide access to healthy food uh, by uh, promoting uh, healthy corner store growth? Here's an example of a two-way street conversion recently done in the city of Lancaster, where they converted a one-way street uh, back to two-way. Um, one-way street through a neighborhood is basically inviting a highway into your neighborhood. And so literally had neighbors who lived across the street from one another who didn't know each other because it was too dangerous to cross the street to say hello. Um, this two-way conversion has slowed the traffic down, uh, but also provided uh, by, by narrowing the street, but also by converting it to two-way, uh, and also provided um, uh, the necessary width for some bike lanes. How are we doing uh, to date? Uh, we're about three and a half years in. The plan was adopted in uh, June 2015. Um, and in just three and a half years, we're about 76% um, of, of, the, of the plan's recommendations are in progress. And that's pretty remarkable when you think about the fact that this is a 15-year plan. We have some defined outcomes we'd like to see by 2030. Uh, an increase in the per capita income to about 70% of Pennsylvania's. Um, that really gets at the idea of you know, how do we how do we lower the poverty rate? How do we grow incomes in the city? Uh, in terms of bricks and sticks development, uh, as we call it, we'd like to see 300 new hotel rooms in downtown and commercial hubs, 2,500 new residential units of all types and, and price points, 100,000 square feet of new and renovated retail and restaurant space, 300,000 square feet of new office space, and in total, we'd like to see a billion dollars 
in privately led investment. And privately led is really the key because I, I mentioned in the years before this plan, we saw a billion and a half dollars of investment. A lot of that was publicly financed. Um, and so moving forward, recognizing that uh, public uh, grant funds um, from the federal or state government aren't as uh, readily available as they used to be, we're really going to rely on the, on the private sector to fund this. As of this month, 40% um, of the plans uh, identified investment opportunity sites, those sites where we'd like to see those new residences, the new office space, the new commercial, 40% uh, of those are either under development or have been recently developed just since uh, mid-2015. Again, quite remarkable. The pace, <coughs> the pace continues to uh, increase. Uh, you can see all those sites identified uh, throughout the city. Again, all clustered along those commercial hubs and the downtown. And you can see here in red, it may be a little hard to see, uh, those are the sites that we're, we've seen action so far. And then how are we doing in terms of those metrics? You know, uh, you know I said 300 new hotel rooms, 2,500 new residential units. You can see here, uh, red is uh, what we're calling actual progress, the percentage of, of that number, that, that identified metric that we've uh, seen completed or underway. Brown is what we're calling anticipated progress. So red is the, are those projects that are recently completed or are currently under development. Brown includes those, but also looks at projects that are in the planning phases. They're on the table, and we hope to see crump come to fruition. You can see on the hotel room side, uh, we're almost at our goal. Uh, that really helps with the 110 room expansion of the Marriott uh, adjacent to the convention center downtown, uh, but also the full sale renovation of uh, the Hotel Lancaster, which will soon become a Holiday Inn Lancaster, uh, operating under the Holiday Inn flag. We're blowing our goals out of the water for new retail and restaurant and office space, as you can see, uh, just three and a half years in. Uh, again, pretty remarkable. And uh, if all the projects that are in the planning phases, uh, plus those that are recently completed and currently under development, all happen, um, we are more than halfway toward our goal of that billion dollars in privately led investment. As you can see, where we really need to do some more work is on the residential side. And the reason that we're really not seeing a whole lot of new residential units, uh, it's, it's a variety of reasons, but uh, really it's often difficult to make the financials work on those development projects for, for new housing. Um, and so we're, again, trying to, to identify through our finance squad and other partners, you know, some creative solutions to make those happen. I think that's it. A lot of information. Hopefully uh, everyone was able to keep up. It's like we have about 10 minutes or so for questions. Discussion? Yes? Do you see a difference in effectiveness working in economic development for like the state, like the Commonwealth of PA versus a private nonprofit organization? <coughs> Do I see a difference between the two? Absolutely. I think um, what really stands out in my mind is um, really it gets down to that private public collaboration. Um, Government can only do so much on their own. Um, what really, really helps us to stand out in the city of Lancaster, especially compared to many of our peer cities in, in the South Central Pennsylvania region, you look at uh, York, you look at Harrisburg, you look at Reading. Um, many of those communities still have a, a public sector mindset. And you know, in other words, you know, City Hall needs to do this for us. Um, where we see Lancaster as different is and we've seen the public sector step up. We've seen residents step up and neighborhood organizations, again, to take, take some of the, the matters into their own hands and affect their own um, outcomes. And um, you know, unlike other cities uh, where you really don't see the, the, the nonprofit institutions and the, the powerful companies uh, stepping in, you might see them give some funding uh, in those cities, but Really, they're, they're engaged and they're at the table here in Lancaster. I think that's really the key difference. Yes, sir. Um, what is the most difficult part of your job and how much influence do you guys have within the city? Great question. So um, the most difficult thing, I think, <laughs> for me personally, is uh, the, size of our, the, the size of our team. You saw it's about seven or eight of us uh, on our team. Uh, and there's a whole lot of work to do. Um, we 
clearly can't do it on our own as a team of seven or eight. Uh, so it's really leaning on those partners and trusting them to, to help us get things done. So using the example of the, the building on strength plan, the plan's in place and we're starting to see progress, but that, that progress wouldn't happen um, if we didn't have an implementation partners team assembled. And so we actually have about 40 uh, institutions, agencies, and companies uh, represented on that implementation partners uh, team and they all have a stake in the success of those 33 plan recommendations. And so they actually report out uh, quarterly on, the, on uh, progress on those. We say, hey, how are you doing on that? And they'll tell us, well, you know, we're hitting some barriers. And so we have discussions about how, how can we overcome those barriers. Um, another difficulty, you know, from my personal perspective is just not enough hours in the day. Um, I, I personally love my job so much, uh, it's hard to unplug at 5 o'clock and go home. Uh, as much as I love my family. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, I'm sorry, what was your second question? Um, how much influence do you have within the city? How much influence do we have? So that, yeah, that's a great question. So um, I mentioned earlier on in the background and history part of my presentation about our organization that we're, we like to be viewed as a trusted advisor. Um, and so we're trusted by, you know, whether it's a developer or a company that has a, a big plan that they'd like to move forward. Um, they often hold, uh, provide us with information and confidence to help them make the best decision for them moving forward. Um, and we use, again, par harnessing the power of the private sector um, really allows us, uh, that, that's really our influence. Um, you know, recognizing those, those major players, uh, multi-million dollar organizations that really um, have a lot of sway um, and a lot of power behind them. And, and uh, really that's how we get things done and, and that's, that's the majority of our influence, I think. But the ability to marry that with our residents and their needs is, is, a, is an interesting balancing act, um, but something that we pride ourselves in. Any other questions? Great. Well, thank you all very much for your time. Uh, pleasure speaking with you today and if you have any follow-up questions if you think of a question uh, after we walk out of here today feel free to shoot me an email um, and I invite all of you again hop on the train at the E-Town train station and come on down to Lancaster for dinner or to come shopping check out the arts uh, and enjoy yourselves